Hello and welcome to our webinar. Today I would like to show you how you can keep your SAP analytics documentations always up to date without investing any manual effort. I will introduce you to our automation tool, which is a perfect complement to the DocuPerformer. It allows you to automate your system synchronization and file creation in a way that the information in your documentations is always reflecting the latest status in your SAP systems. But before I will show you how this works in detail, let me introduce myself. My name is Malta Haring. I'm product owner here at Intelligence, and I have the pleasure to walk you through this session today. I will start the session with a small recall of scenarios and what their purpose in the DocuPerformer is. Then I will show you how the automation tool is leveraging the um, DocuPerformer in general. And we will finish the presentation with some additional useful information. Okay, let's start with scenario. Let's recall what scenarios were all about. So originally, we started to provide with the DocuPerformer a possibility to enrich your SAP objects with comments and to create technical documentation of single objects. However, our customers often had the requirement to create cross-system documentations to the full extent, for example, for complete data models or for projects which were related to multiple objects. So this is exactly what scenarios were introduced for. They allow you to bundle all documents and information of a complete data model into one single documentation. How does it work? They, are, they have a certain structure. So you can create scenarios in the document performer with certain structure elements like text boxes, pictures to structure your document. Then you can add your SAP objects, which you would like to create the documentation for. The scenarios also include the comments which you were creating for these objects. And in the end, it's even possible to integrate already existing documentations, which you already have available in Word files. So let's see how you can control the scenarios and how they can help you to address one and the same documentation to different target groups. Therefore, you can set certain export settings when creating a documentation. For example, you can choose your settings variants to control the extent of technical details of the objects which are part of the scenario. You can also use comment variants to control which comments should be considered for the documentation. For example, comments only relevant for business or comments relevant for IT people. An additional setting is the language setting. So some of your end users might be able to understand the documentations only in English. And in the end, you also select the export source, meaning the system which you would like to document. Is it the test system, the development system, or even the productive system? Okay, before I show you some more slides, let me show you how this works in Document Performer itself. Therefore, I open the DocuPerformer and I go to the section commenting and click on scenarios. Here you can already see a list of scenarios which are already created. Let me show you how you can create a new scenario. Therefore, I click on the plus button up here. I can give the scenario a technical name, for example, demo webinar. I can set the language in which the documentation should be available can even give a description to the scenario. And now I can select a template, which is always recommended. So you will be able to create your own templates so that the basic structure of each documentation is always the same. Let me select for now the template scenario for projects. And then I click on create. And I already have a basic structure of my scenario. Let me open it for now. Now you can see the different elements, structure elements that a scenario consists of. So per default in the template, we already have some chapters like an introduction, a chapter which is explaining the integration of, uh, of the project. Then we have one chapter for persons responsible, uh, a little business background and so on. But this is of course only the template. Now feel free to use any structure elements you can see here on the left side and add them to the scenario per drag and drop. Then you can fill these chapters with content. The text elements, for example, you can fill with your own text, like for example, the introduction to this documentation 
is, and you can save it. Let me show you what I prepared for you. So I will close this template scenario for now, and I will open a scenario which I prepared for this session. In this scenario, I wanted to document a whole data model with all its layers. So you can see I wrote a little introduction. Let me show you it with some text. Uh, I also mentioned uh, the integration aspects of this data model. And then I started to add my entities of the SAP BW system. So I'm starting the documentation with the data flow below the decomposite provider of my data model. And then I'm having one chapter for each layer in the data warehouse. I have one chapter for my data source layer where I have all my data sources in. I have an extraction layer, layer chapter where all my extraction layer ADSOs are in. And I have a harmonization and architected data mart layer. So let me show you how easy it is to assign objects to a certain scenario. As you can see on the small symbols here, I created so-called assignment rules. So for each chapter in your scenario, you can create so-called assignment rules. This means, for example, that for this chapter, I only want queries to be part of it. And let me show you how this reflects when you assign objects to the scenario. Therefore, I will quickly open a data flow of my composite provider with the analysis tool. I go via context menu and say display data flow, and I would like to see how the data flow looks like. Okay, so the, this is my complete data model. Well, not really complete because I'm missing the queries, right? So let me show you how I can enrich this data model with my queries. And I will select just three of them for now. And I now get to know which of queries are part on this composite provider. And I would like to use, add these queries to my documentation. So I can select them. And via context menu, I can simply assign them to my new scenario which was scenario data model. I can assign the entities, close this for now. And now I can go back to my scenarios, open it one more time. And here you will see that my three selected queries in the data flow were automatically um, added to the chapter queries. So now I have a feeling that the data model is documented in a complete way, meaning I get all my selected objects, which I included, and I added them to the specific chapters here. I would like to start the export now. And while starting the export, I'm allowed to set certain settings. I can, for example, set the settings variant. This controls how deep the technical detail of each of the object documentation is. Is IT standard documentation, for example, might be a little more detailed, meaning you can, for example, uh, for example, see some source code for certain objects. But you can also choose, for example, a business standard documentation, which doesn't really need so much technical details. The next setting I can do is a word. To fulfill your corporate design, you can easily create word templates, which you can upload to a docu performer and make it available in this selection. Next setting, comment variants. Choose which kind of comments of the objects you would like to integrate in the documentation. Should it be business-related comments, support-related comments, or maybe technical comments? Here I go for technical comments. I'm almost done. Now I can set the language, the documentation language, and the comment language, which I would like to consider, and I can set a version. By clicking on export, I will get a document which is completely documenting my whole data model up from data source up to the queries. Let me show you how this looks in the end. So here I prepared my export. You can see the template which I provided with the DocuPerformer. This is, for example, now a documentation of my purchasing data model. I have some settings which I set during the export listed on the main page. And then I'm already um, come to the table of content, which is automatically created by the DocuPerformer. I see my chapters with a certain objects. 
Then I see my introduction, which I was creating with my text elements. And afterwards, I get to the technical details. So this content is completely created automatically. I can see a nice data flow view in a network of my composite provider. And then I get a list of all my objects included in this scenario, my data sources, I get my ADSOs and everything up to the queries. This is how easy you can create documentation of related objects, for example, in data models. Okay, let's jump quickly back to the presentation. Some recommendations. It's useful to create your scenarios at an early stage of your development. So whenever you are building a new data model, it might make sense to build up your scenario simultaneously. So you get the complete picture. Then it's always recommended to create your scenarios with the highest level of detail. So include all the objects which are part of your data model, because in the end you can control via settings variants and comment variants how much the detail of the output in the end is going to be. Think about the existing target groups, which persons are going to read the documentation, and then decide how the settings for the output should be like. Create assignment rules as you saw for the queries which I showed you to have an easy way of creating the content of your scenario. Reuse created structures and content via templates. So to standardize your documentation concept, it's always useful to have templates which people can use to create their individual documentations. Okay, that's it about scenarios. This is the basis for the automation tool. Now let's talk about the automation tool. What is it all about? Well, once you have created a scenario, the document creation can be triggered manually via clicking on export. However, technical changes in the subsystem over time are not reflecting in this document because you would first of all need to create it again. Thus, there is a need to update the documentation from time to time and you don't want to do this manually, right? This is why the automation tool was developed to support you in automatically creating a document with the latest status of your system from time to time. How does it work? Well, first of all, you have to do two kinds of settings. In the DocuPerformer, you select all your scenarios which you want to create an export for on a general basis. You select the settings variants, the common variants, the language, and also the source export. And with these settings, you can go further to the automation tool because here you configure in which frequency the documents should be updated. Should it happen on a daily basis, a monthly basis, at a certain time? And you can also assign the target path. Where should the documents be placed? In this case, you can also choose a path on a, on a SharePoint, for example. And in the end, if you create your documentations on the daily basis, your end users will always be up to date by opening the documentation files which will always show the latest status in your ZAP system. Okay, some basics before I jump into the system. The automation tool is delivered with our installation file, so you can install it alongside DocuPerformer. Before you can start using the automation tool, it's necessary to install and start certain Windows services. Okay, so how do you automate your documentation afterwards? Well, you can schedule the automated ex export of scenarios in the automation tool itself. This way, your documents will always be up to date. So first of all, you select the scenarios in DocuPerformer, which you want to create an export for on a general basis. Here, for example, you can see that three scenarios were selected with different setting variants, different language settings, but the same word template and even different comment variants and comment languages were used. So you have the full flexibility to create for each scenario your individual output. Once this is done, you go to the automation tool and you define the path where these documents should be created on a regular basis and in which frequency. Let me show you how this in DocuPerformer and in the automation tool. Therefore, I first go to DocuPerformer one more time. Let me close the scenario. First, 
Here you can see that you have the option to show and edit scheduled scenarios. And here I can list all the scenarios I want to create and export on a general basis. So let me choose our scenario, which we were using before, scenario data model. Here I would like to create a business documentation, so a very high detail of technical um, information. Um, I would like to create the documentation in English. I would use our corporate design template and I will also use technical comments. The comment language itself should also be English and I would like to get the technical information out of my productive system. Okay, maybe let's add one more scenario, our demo webinar scenario, which I would like to create with a business standard documentation. And I would also use the business comments for my business end users. And also here, I would like to get the status of the productive system. I will save the settings and now I'm almost done, but I need to go to the automation tool once. Okay. Let me open the automation tool. Here we go. And now you can see there is two kinds of settings which I can do. First of all, I can set up the synchronization of my SAP systems. So I can define on which regular basis my objects are synchronized into DocuPerformer. This is done in this area. For sure, therefore, a BW user is needed. So I'm entering here my BW user and I can set the regularity in which the system should be synchronized. For example, for system A4H, I would like to do this every day. Okay, now let's get to the settings regarding our regular export. Here I can set the path. If you're sharing your documents with multiple people, it might make sense to give a path on a SharePoint over here. After setting the path where the documents should end up, you select the time frequency in which the documents are created. To be on the safe side, I'm going to set that uh, the documents should be updated every day around 11 o'clock. Okay, and this, this is it. This is how you can automate the document generation um, on a daily basis. The system always goes into your current status of the system and selects all the technical details of the objects to update the document itself. All right. Some recommendations regarding the automation tool. The automation tool ideally will run on a central server. You should always create a, a special SAP user for the automation tool because once you are using a regular business user or IT user, then the likelihood of changing a password is high and you don't want to change these settings for the automation tool on a regular basis. The first synchronization of objects to the DocuPerformer will happen in DocuPerformer itself. And afterwards, you can set up the automatic synchronization in the automation tool. Set the time for the export at night because this is the time when your systems are less stressed and there is enough time to get the documents created. And as already mentioned, it's ideal to use a SharePoint so that many people have access to the documents. Okay, that's it. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you got some insight how you can automate your documentation for your SAP analytics objects. Bye.